Hello, welcome to English 3, Quest 1, Expository Reading. We're going to take a look at a text that is set up in a problem-solution way for the organizational pattern, and we're going to begin with summarizing and then answering some questions about the text. This is one way to comprehend and deeply understand expository text using guided reading questions. So let's start with a list of the questions. The first question is, how or why is the organizational pattern important? Question number two, how does the author's style increase the piece's effectiveness? Or what does it take away from the piece if his style is ineffective or if her style is ineffective? How does the tone support the text's controlling idea? How does the author use diction to convey his or her, in this case her, perspective? And why is context important, be it cultural, historical, or contemporary, or a mixture of all of those? How is that relevant? How is the context relevant in this piece? So those are the questions that we're going to answer after we read the text. But it's important to look at the questions first to kind of set the purpose for reading. The title of the article is 50 Ways to Fix Your Life. Okay. Americans have long been captivated by the notion of self-improvement, none more so than Benjamin Franklin, an accomplished printer, author, postmaster, scientist, inventor, and diplomat who taught himself to speak five languages this founding father never stopped striving to change for the better. At the tender age of 79, he conceived the bold and arduous project of arriving at moral perfection, describing 13 virtues to aim for, temperance, silence, order, resolution, frugality, industry, sincerity, justice, moderation, cleanliness, tranquility, chastity, and humility and an intricate system for charting his progress in each. Speak not, but what may benefit others or yourself. Avoid trifling conversation, he writes in his autobiography. Lose no time. Be always employed in something useful. Cut off all unnecessary actions. Today, self-help is not just a way of life, it's practically a national obsession. There are 7,500 books on the topic on Amazon.com alone, covering just about every imaginable bad habit or dilemma. Such offerings appeal to the deeply felt American idea of before and after, says Robert Thompson, professor of media and popular culture at Syracuse University in New York, who points out the underlying similarities between Franklin and, say, Dr. Phil. If you were born a peasant in a medieval village, hard, you knew who you were, and it was very hard to change that. But there is fluidity of class, and entire industries and program types pop up that reflect the ultimate optimism that really anybody can be a swan and completely turn his or her life around. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the repeated words or phrases, um, words or phrases that are synonymous will work too, so that we can pull the words as you saw in the summary strategy before you actually got to this part. So I know that this is about fixing your life. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight fix your life. Um, I see a synonym for fixing your life, which is self-improvement. The author also used the term self-help here, so I highlighted that. Okay. There is completely turn his or her life around. So that is also synonymous with self-improvement. Alrighty, so we're going to go ahead and continue reading and keeping in mind some of the questions that we need to address. How does the author's style increase the piece's effectiveness? How or why is the organizational pattern important? The problem-solution organizational pattern. Why is it important in this piece? How does the author use diction to convey his perspective or her perspective? What is her perspective? And how does the tone, how does the author's tone support the controlling idea? So we're thinking about the controlling idea and evidence of that.
Time to change. The hard truth is that lasting change doesn't usually happen in a single TV season. In reality, of the 40 to 45 percent of people who will make New Year's resolutions come January, be it to quit smoking, start flossing, declutter, or finally plan for retirement, fewer than half will succeed within six months, according to John Norcross, professor of psychology at the University of Scranton in Pennsylvania and co-author of Changing for Good. But while many of us struggle to better ourselves in these various ways, always seeming to fall short somehow, and to stay mired in destructive routines, the fact is that when someone makes a serious commitment to transform his or her life, it is possible. Norcross, who had been studying the subject for over 25 years, says that 70 to 80 percent of those who actively attempt to switch are ultimately successful, though it may take two, five, ten tries or more. Once people understand that change is a process, a developmental progression with distinct steps to move through, then our capacity to alter behavior is quite impressive, he says. It is a marathon, not a hundred yard dash. How can you cross that far off finish line? While the key to success varies from person to person, experts agree that certain attitudes and behaviors both prior to and during the change process help predict who will make it. Suppose you want to lose 20 pounds. First and foremost, you really have to be ready to do it and understand that the pros outweigh the cons, that being heavy has harmful consequences, and that losing weight has tangible benefits like improved health. Okay, so let's pause here and highlight some of the repeated words and ideas that appear in this section. There are several ideas that were repeated in this section. Completely turn his or her life around is connected to change and change is repeated again and crossing the far off finish line which is essentially making a change. Then we have resolutions or a commitment to change or transform and then literally commitment to transform and so those two are connected. Struggle to better ourselves and attempt a switch those are both synonymous for making a change. And then we have change is a process, a developmental progression, so it's restated in another way. And then also the change process is repeated below. So those are some of the ideas that will help us to summarize. We're ready to begin reading our next section. People who are committed to working hard at dieting and who view it as a major undertaking rather than a minor episode are more likely to stick with the program. And the more confidence you have in your ability to lose weight, the more likely it is that you will. Once you decide that you are, indeed, prepared to break a bad habit, it's essential to set realistic goals like losing one or two pounds a week versus a full suit size and to come up with an equally sensible plan of attack. Many of us don't change until we're in crisis mode, until we get diagnosed with high blood pressure or our mate leaves us or we lose our job. And once that moment comes, we're looking for a big leap to get out of pain. But for most of us, those big leaps don't get results. Says Robert Maurer, a clinical psychologist and author of One Small Step Can Change Your Life, The Kaizen Way. Research on lasting change shows that it tends to be incremental so that the body, the relationship, or the organization has a chance to adapt. It's also important to cleave to your strengths and interests while pursuing change. It has to feel good for people to keep doing it, says medical psychologist Dan Baker, founding director of the Life Enhancement Program at Canyon Ranch Health Resort who suggests that those who want to get into better shape and love the outdoors try cycling, not a stuffy gym. If you enjoy interacting with people, work out with a friend. Research shows that keeping track of your development in a visible way, charting weight loss for one, or graphing your heart rate and stamina, is associated with sustainable lifestyle change, as is social support, whether in the form of friends, online discussion groups, or reliable proven self-help books. Lastly, and most important, don't give up if you tumble off the wagon now and then. When people who slip once equated with a fall, a lapse becomes a relapse, says John Norcross. Now they're drinking again, smoking again, overeating, or not exercising at all, and they feel like a failure. They view it as evidence of their inability to change and give up entirely. 
in contrast triumphant changers often see a setback as a reason to recommit to their goal and they get back on the horse immediately in the end simply making a concerted effort to improve your lifestyle can have lasting benefits no matter what the final result consider franklin a notorious ladies man who had difficult relationships with his family he also had varying levels of success with his quest for moral perfection though he made great strides overall franklin found the virtue of order let all things have their place let each part of your business have its time particularly vexing and ultimately unattainable that's not to say his self-help experiment was a failure indeed the inestimable the inestimable franklin recounts but on the whole though i never arrived at the perfection i had been so ambitious of obtaining but fell far short of it yet i was by the endeavor a better and a happier man than i otherwise should have been if i had not attempted it u s news and world report two thousand five some of the repeated ideas in this section pursuing change not giving up recommitting similarly tracking development by charting graphing and etc so we're ready to summarize the piece in one statement let's take a look back at some of the words that we highlighted in other sections we have crossing the finish line changes of progress developmental progression change process struggle to better ourselves commit to transform completely turning your life around self-help self-improvement so if we had to write a sentence of summary it would look like this so our summary sentence is as follows self-improvement is a process which requires commitment and it's important to track your progress and to remember to recommit no matter how you may struggle because there are lasting benefits so as you can see there's information from the beginning the middle of the selection and the end now i believe we're ready to answer our questions first how or why is the organizational pattern important the problem solution organizational pattern is important because it's the most logical way to discuss self-help um, people who are looking to improve themselves need to know the truth and they need to know where the pitfalls are so they could hopefully avoid them so in presenting the information the way this author does it allows the audience to understand what they're faced with if they're looking to improve something in their lives okay let's take a look at another question um how does the author's style increase the piece's effectiveness again the question was how does the author's style increase the piece's effectiveness well he chooses details that are specific to self-improvement such as smoking and weight loss so it kind of gives the audience the feel, feeling of him being or her excuse me being an insider like she knows exactly what she's talking about she's knowledgeable additionally the author uses quotes from expert psychologists and those who deal with the the support groups and the people who need help with self-improvement and so it gives him credibility okay so let's take a look at question number three let's go with context cultural historical or contemporary let's talk about why either of those or a couple of those are relevant in this piece bettering oneself is relevant historically as benjamin franklin's autobiography was written in the 1700s additionally um, self-help or self-improvement has contemporary relevance today there are a variety of topics that people seem obsessed again there are a variety of topics that are relevant today in terms of improving oneself so the topic has both historical relevance and contemporary relevance you've had the opportunity to look at expository text today uh, we went through the summary strategy together we highlighted repeated words phrases and ideas additionally we answered three questions three guided reading questions that we looked at before reading in order to better analyze the text thank you for taking this quest